So today we got a really cool video. I'm actually going up to my dad's and we're going to put together a blend of frozen fish foods. It's probably not what you think. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot cooler, but you're going to hear from both of us. Uh, just keep watching the video. Um, and at the end of it, I think we're also going to be maybe giving some away. Um, and we'll also probably be selling it depending on how it turns out. Uh, but just keep watching and check it out. All right, so I got the couple corals packed up that I'm bringing up to my dad's. A couple of torches. Unfortunately, they're just not doing good in my tank. You know, I, I always thought of torches as uh, being able to handle a little bit higher light and nutrients but the more that I've raised my nutrients the more they've struggled and they're sitting in about 180 par in the place that they were in my tank so I'm gonna bring them up to the tank at my dad's and let's try to see how they'll do there anyways uh, so I'm gonna carry that out to the truck <clears throat> this is gonna be a fun trip and I have to hold it sideways because I don't want to use a ton of water from my tank then we're gonna go up to my dad's, which again is like five minutes up the road, but we're gonna be putting together a frozen fish food blend, so. Let's get to it. Okay, so we finally made it. It's quite the trip hauling this bucket, holding it all the way up. If I try to set it down somewhere in the truck, it always splashes all over the place. So I actually have to hold it. Thankfully, it's a really short drive. But uh, here we are. You see this tank is going through its severe algae bloom. Can't wait till that part's over. It's interesting how they're both connected to the same system, uh, but this tank over here has no algae issues. All the daylights are on right now. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna put these torches, I think, right down on this end. My dad had to put this rock right here because that tang, not that one, the big one, <laughs> he's right down there. Uh, keeps splashing sand all over everything and he keeps burying all these corals down here it's just kind of frustrating we got to clean the glass today too but boy it's amazing how different these corals look in the daylight versus when your blues are on just a huge difference there's some that I really love during daylight settings uh, but for the most part, most of these just look way better under blues. Uh, but they, they, need, they need a little variety. And we need to see a little variety. It smells Powder. like... It smells like... It smells like... Ass meat. Nope. Yeah, it does. It really does. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> alien. <laughs> alien always has to smell all those things. <laughs> hey, alien. <laughs> He's gonna be he immune to horrible smells when he gets older. <laughs> He's gonna like, yeah, Grandpa. <laughs> that's, that's some cool stuff, Grandpa. Thanks for doing that to me. Ew. He always just smiles this funny smile when I do that <laughs> Got the Cuisinart here. Vita Chem. This probably smells bad. 
Okay, so let's go over our ingredients list first because that was uh, the hardest part was actually finding meat that wasn't uh, with any uh, neurotoxins. Um, almost all of the shellfish and stuff has um, additives to enhance its flavor and to make it last longer. So we were able to find stuff though. Um, we got some uh, Atlantic salmon that we cubed up and we're gonna, it's semi-frozen. We wanna keep stuff semi-frozen if we can because it goes to the grinder so much better. We've got some uh, shrimp and that we actually got at Aldi's and that was with no additives. And then we found at one of the grocery stores finally um, the base scalps that were without any additives as well. So we got frozen base scalps. So that's the meat. That was the hardest parts to find. The rest of it we mostly ordered on uh, um, Bulk Reef Supply or Amazon. So we can go over that really quick. Um, starting out with one of the things that a lot of people do is they just add a regular premium fish food or we're just using the Omega-1 because it already has a lot of good stuff in there. And because after we make our reef chili, we're not gonna need this that much anymore. So we might as well add it to our thing. We came in with uh, a couple of items that we picked up from Bulk Reef Supply. Some krill and some mysa shrimp. And these are freeze dried. Um, some Vitacam. Marine. Yep, it's gotta be the marine one. We learned that uh, there's a difference because I ordered the other one. Luckily we got a freshwater tank too. And then from Brightwell Aquatics, we're gonna use a little bit of uh, coral aminos. So we're gonna add some of that into there. And think about this in terms of every time you feed your fish, every day they're gonna get a little bit of everything in there, so it's kind of uh, cool. And then we've got some garlic extreme. And then to the other dried foods. We, this was an interesting find here. This one was one of the more premium brand, um, highest rated, um, no additives and I mean, just had the best ratings from all the people who regularly use um, seaweed and stuff. So we we're able to find that with a really high grade. And then, how do we say this? The spirulina, spirulina. spirulina. Okay, and we got a big package of that, which is gonna make it awfully dark when we add that. And the last thing also is we're gonna add some refroids. So every time we feed, we're also gonna be helping out our, our uh, friends down at the bottom. All right, so what are we gonna do now? So the first thing we're gonna do is we've got set up here a couple of bins with ice underneath. We wanna keep everything as cold as can be. We're gonna grind up the frozen meats first, get those set up so we can start blending up the other. And we just got an old Quiznart uh, blender here with a serrated top blade on it and I think that's kind of important because you want to be able to just chip the meat off. You don't want to grind it and, and emulsify it. You know, you don't want to mush it. You just want to be able to chip it off and stuff and especially frozen, it's gonna work good with that. Okay, so one of the things too you want to kind of think about is you might not want to use your regular uh, Wipes House Blender in their mixer. This one was donated to us. It was kind of feeling like it was on its last leg so we were donated this one just for this process here and we'll get as much use out of it as we can. So we're gonna start out with um, grinding up all the meats and then put packing them on ice right away before we start kind of blending in the dries. So why don't we start out with and just see how um, the shrimp's gonna go through. Next we'll start out with the scalps and we'll see how these things are gonna go through. There we'll dump a couple of them down here. We're going to give it a shot here and see. <laughs> we got to engage the uh, bottom here, it looks like a little bit. Like Alright, so we're going to start off with this and blending up some of these. Let's see. I can hold this on. Um, <laughs>
that didn't go as expected would be an underestimate, an understatement. This was a mess from the get-go. It didn't, uh, it didn't grind well, and uh, it was a mess. It was spraying out at us and <laughs> spraying across the table, dropping stuff. Our hands are really gooey right now, so this is not a job for the faint-hearted for sure. But this is what's left of the salmon there. And here is the shrimp here and the scalps are underneath, but it did a nice job on it once we got through it all, unfortunately. Oh, look at that. It is one big mess. Not something you want to do in, if you can on your kitchen. All right, I'm going to go wash up and then we're going to come back and start mixing up dry ingredients and blending the other stuff up a little bit. And we're going to get some uh, reef chili before this is over. And we're gonna we're gonna actually switch over to the bullet blender. I think it'll work a little bit better for grinding up the seaweed and um, the krill, um, and then I think the rest of the liquid ingredients will go okay. So we're gonna give this a try. We never tried this before. Nobody's ever ground this up this way. So do you want to just mix them all together in one? We'll try a little bit of this and see. Pull that with a little bit of this. And a little bit of the marine pellets. No, no, we're just going to try it dried first oh, and we'll okay. see how that goes first. It might just work out really well like that. Let's give this a shot. Let's put it in. Okay, so we got we got the uh, dry stuff mixed up. Well, the first batch of it anyways. Uh, now we're just gonna sprinkle it over the top of all the wet seafood. Here's what we're looking at roughly, the consistency. Okay. We'll be uh, doing another batch of that. So the idea is to grind that all up and then at the very end we'll add the rest of our amino acids and garlic extract and uh, marine vitachem uh, and then we'll just kind of mash it all together with our hands uh, and and then once it's all stirred together then we freeze it separately so hopefully it should be like a thorough even consistent mix uh, and then when we decide to feed the fish in, in the tank, we can just unbreak it from Ziploc baggies and throw little chunks in the tank at a time. Okay, so we got all our dried stuff that we blended up. We're gonna put in some refroids. We had a little bit of an argument over how much I say more, he says less. So we're gonna do one decent sized teaspoon, <laughs> tablespoon. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's... Just remember, Reefroids adds a lot of phosphates quickly, so if you enjoy feeding your fish, don't add too many reefroids. <laughs> All right, and then the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to add some uh, garlic extreme, and we'll probably, um, I think this is a one and a half ounce bottle or two ounce bottle. It's two ounce. And we're going to add about one ounce. We're going to do about half of it. Shake it up a little bit more. Just shake it up and dump half of it in there. Okay. Ooh, does that smell strong? Whew. This is all this morning, it's already about halfway. Good. Yep. Okay. And then amino acids. Um, aminos, here we go. 
So shake it up. And then we'll do five capfuls of that. Because again, this is another one that we can always add extra later. You don't want to overdo any one thing in particular, otherwise your whole batch will be thrown off. And there's five of them. And then our Vita can. Okay, we figured about half of that. Yep. So the bottle's pretty much full. And the I I would say let's start with a third. And okay. we can always add so some of the recipes were very generous with their portions. But again, like I said, some of this stuff you can always add more later. It's always better to add a little bit and test your water and see how things go after a week or two of feeding. Um, and then make adjustments if you need to on your second batch. But the first batch, you should always be a little bit more uh, liberal with it. Okay. So about half of that. What is that? A third Spirulina. This third was a cup? third cup. Yep. So about uh, probably about a sixth of a cup of a, a spirulina from for the mix that we've used here. Okay. So it's so right about there. Yep. And then we'll uh, mix the rest up by hand and just kind of mash it all together as best we can. Blend everything in together into one. Sticks. And then uh, once we're done, we'll pack it into bags with thin sheets to throw in, in the freezer to keep it fresh. Uh, and then, yeah, then we'll, when the time comes, we'll pull like, one bag out at a time and just break off little chunks. So same as you do with frozen fish food from the store. All right, got some throwaway utensils here that we're going to join in the fun with. Uh, I think we'll start mixing up and see how this comes out. It's got a definitely a pretty thick consistency. It's going to need a little bit of water, I can tell already. I thought it would be wet enough with all that seafood, but it's coming pretty dry. And I think we're going to want to keep it somewhat dry so it's easier to break apart when you, you know, pull it out of the freezer. If we have a lot of liquid, it's going to be a solid amount of block for feeding. But yeah, I definitely think a little bit of uh, a little salt water from the tank to help out here. You can almost, almost just mix it by hand. <laughs> we really want to mash it in pretty good. Man. <laughs> okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll start out with a half cup. Um, for measurement, heaping kind of a little bit, and then we'll we'll put it in baggies, flat as we can, um, so that it's easy to crack off and measure, you know, kind of consistency, um, you know, how much we're doing, because we're gonna want to check our tank numbers um, at first and see what. <laughs> that looks so terrible. <laughs> so, so just so you guys know, we did actually just feed a wad of this to the tank. Should have videotaped it. Um, but everything kind of dispersed into the tank, a little bit cloudy, uh, but the fish came up and ate it right away. I just, I wanna, I wanna do a couple weeks, maybe two or three weeks of testing it out, checking water parameters, seeing how the fish, seeing how the coral respond, uh, and, and after a couple of weeks, make kind of a more thorough decision on uh, the effectiveness of this blend and then go from there. If everything looks good and the fish are responding well, the corals are responding well, uh, the nitrates, phosphates, all the other levels in the tank are doing well, I think we got a good mix here. Um, if something's off, we'll catch it uh, and we'll be able to record that and make adjustments with our next batch. Um, thankfully, we know where to get everything and we still have quite a bit of leftovers of everything too. 
Okay, and then, and then the other thing too is um, this would be the blooper section. So we were gonna add mussels to this and we were gonna add squid. We couldn't find the squid, but we did buy some mussels. We bought them on uh, Monday, I believe. Today is Sunday. And Bobby went to grab them out of the refrigerator and he said they smelled just really, really bad. So um, I just said, well, let's just hold them out then and we'll, we'll throw them away later or whatever. Well, I didn't realize it, but he took and he threw them outside over my backyard fence into the woods. <laughs> that was not cool. I'm gonna have skunks in my yard big time and probably, probably uh, raccoons and bear and everything. And even the dogs are sitting at the edge of the fence just licking their chops thinking there's something over there that's really good. None of the dogs were licking their chops. I chucked them way out there. Um, and, and Judah is, we could videotape him outside. So we're gonna start out with just a um, about a half a cup here of this and and uh, maybe a little bit more and then we'll see how that how that measures up for, uh, for bags full. So it's probably gonna be just about three quarters of a cup full and then we'll smash it out. I might need another hand to do it, but we'll try to, there we go. Sneak it in, perfect. And then let's smash this out and let's just see what we get out of it. Oh yeah, that's gonna be nice. Cause it'll be about a quarter inch to three eighths inch thick. Should be pretty easy to break apart. We'll squeeze a little more air out of there. Yeah, I think like a quarter inch would be optimal. Cause then you can just break it while it's in the bag without having to take it out and cut it up with a knife. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's just a, just a hair more than a quarter inch. Most of it's pretty thin though. Look at that. <laughs> a nice bag. So how long do you think that would last like, our tank right there? Probably with the 300 gallon in the frag tank that would probably last feeding generously maybe a month. Yeah, so I'm thinking somewhere close to a month worth. And we still got all that left. <laughs> <laughs> we might have to sell some of it. <laughs> okay, so all in all it was a pretty good day. A little father-son time on Father's Day. Um, we got a chance to make some beautiful uh, music together for our fish tank and um, hopefully we're going to have uh, some healthy bittles for the tank for a long time to come. So we're just going to throw these in kind of flat and separately so they can um, just really freeze out flat and then we'll, we'll fix them up later. Alright, so all in all uh, some key takeaways. Number one, this was our first time doing this. So we're still in the trial stage, uh, keeping note of everything. Obviously we have the video to refer to and also some simple instructions. But uh, yeah, we you can see kind of in the background, we made a pretty big mess. Uh, there was a lot that went on. Uh, the whole course of this was probably a, almost, what, three hours? And, and, and we didn't show all the arguments. There were quite a few discussions and, and disagreements, but we worked through it in the end, and we were still a little bit sore about the muscles going back over the fence in the backyard here, but there'll be another video to show the, re the repercussions of that. Yeah. I Maybe there might be a skunk that wanders around at some point, but... Anyways, uh, so we're freezing them all separately. I think in the end, total estimate is based on, on what I think is all that we did tonight would probably last six to nine months feeding generously. Uh, but again, we need to do some water tests, check everything uh, and report back in. So, but anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thanks for bearing with us and stay tuned to kind of see some of the results. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Aquatic Bob's out.